Hello, welcome to our video on the do's of the professional presenter. Now in another video I go through what I call the top 10 mistakes of presenters, novice presenters. Here we're going to talk about what the professional presenter should do. So there we talk about the negative version. Do not say um. Here we're going to spin that positively and give you imperatives. Do speak clearly. See the difference? So if you want to know what not to do, go over there, watch the top 10 mistakes of the novice presenter. If you want to know what to do, stay here and find out the 10 do's of the professional presenter. Some of these do's are all by themselves though. So, ready to get started? All right, do number one, create clear, easy to read slides. Now in another video I go through some ideas about what makes a clear, easy to read slide. And that really is different from one person to another. Some people like slides that have a lot of information on them. Some people like slides that have very little information. So that can be a choice of the person. But here, let's talk in general. If we want to create a clear, easy to read slide, what we need to do is use the PowerPoint medium that we know is in conjunction with the presenter. What I mean here is that the slide is not meant to stand alone. Some people ask me for my slides after I present or instead of my presentation, and I always tell them, sure, I will give you my slides, I'll let you see them. But the slides only tell a part of the story. The main information comes from my mouth. The slides are just there to accompany and help me, help the audience understand. So, a clear, easy to read slide is a slide that uses the presentation and PowerPoint medium to help communicate. It is not a standalone document. If we treat it as a standalone document, then why not let it stand alone? Why not sit down and let the audience read the slides? If it's meant to be the entire thing, then there's no need to have the presenter. So, do, so I don't think of it that way. I think of it as something that is meant to help me communicate with my audience. So if we want to create clear, easy to read slides, how can we do that? Well, one way to not have slides that stand alone is to use animation to help the audience. Animation is anything except a static slide. So anything that makes the slide not completely static by itself. Now some people argue that there's no room for animation in a technical presentation or professional presentation whatsoever. I think it can be used effectively. Edward Tuft in his The Cognitive Style of PowerPoint, he goes through and he analyzes how PowerPoint has all this stuff he calls fluff. P-P-H-L-U-F-F. -F, fluff. The point there is that people use the tool PowerPoint incorrectly. They don't think of it as how it can communicate with the audience. That's what we need to do. All words, pictures, figures, tables, animation, everything on that slide should be there to help communicate. Nothing is there for its own sake. We don't have a slide rip itself in half or fold itself. We don't do things like that that are just there to point out the features of PowerPoint. We don't do PowerPoint for its own sake. We use it to help communicate. So I stick with the appear function. The appear function allows points to appear as we cover them, so we keep the audience on track. So I stick with appear unless I'm talking about a process that it moves or points that connect to one another and I want to have them actually move. But things that fly, type, tear, None of that. Not useful. It doesn't help the audience. So number one, create clear, easy to read slides. Number two, you can help do that by using animation to communicate with the audience. Number three, think of your slides as notes. The professional presenter, because he knows the slides are meant to be used in conjunction with the person speaking, uses the slides as notes. Now a slide with a lot of information on it, when you try to communicate that to the audience, you end up having to read from it. And that's a no-no. So you have your back to the audience and you're reading to the audience. We don't want to do that. It makes it hard to hear and it means we're not actually talking to them. We're talking to a screen. So we don't want to do that. 
if we think of our slides as notes, we can avoid that because we just turn, get the point, and then we can talk to our audience. We're not just reading all the information. The problem is that the novice presenter puts every piece of information on the slide. The professional presenter puts notes and then talks with the audience. Much better to do that. If I put all of the information on the slide, it goes back to that point, I might as well sit down because I'm no longer necessary. So create clear, easy to read side, slides. How? By using animation to help and thinking of your slides as notes. The fourth point is to speak directly to your audience. If we create our slides as notes, that means they're clear, easy to read, we use animation to help our audience, we think of it as notes, then we can speak directly to the audience. It's called a PowerPoint presentation, but for many people the focus is on PowerPoint and not on presentation. It should really be switched. It should be a presentation that uses PowerPoint. A PowerPoint presentation, even if that's what we call it, should really be thought of as a speech that, help, that uses PowerPoint to help or aid. Okay, so our first four points are about the slides. Create clear, easy to read slides by using animation effectively, thinking of your slides as notes, and speaking directly to the audience. Those first four things are really about the slides themselves and how we create them. The fifth point is analyze your audience. I've got a whole other presentation on overcoming presentation fears where I talk about one of the main ways is to know your audience. I want to kind of recap that here. Knowing the audience is very important. First, you have to know what they want. Know the audience. Know what they want. I have two presentation rules that I try to live by. First, give the people what they want. Try to please the audience. The second rule is do what your boss tells you. Sometimes these conflict. If my boss tells me to present on Moore's Law, even though I know that my audience isn't really interested in it or they already know it or it's not useful to them, if my boss tells me to do it, I'm still going to do it. Because that person is my boss. They have power over me. Your boss is the person that either controls your paycheck or controls your grade. They have power. They are the person you're supposed to do what they tell you. But if my boss doesn't tell me specifically what to present on, then I'm going to try to give my audience what they want. And that can be what they can use. So if I know if my audience has nothing to do with Moore's Law because they all work in construction and they don't use computers on a regular basis and they're certainly not designing them and they don't care about chip size, then I'm going to try to give them something that they want. After all, everyone in the audience is there to learn something good. I might as well try to give them that. So we want to know what the audience wants. We want to try to give them what they want. But we also want to give them what they can use. Hopefully what they can use is what they want. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes people do want something. They want to know something just because it's interesting. But most of the time we're talking with professionals. We're talking to technical people. They want something they can take home. Something they can use. Something they can go and work on. I know it's kind of weird, but we sometimes think of presentations as what do I want to present on? But that's the wrong question. It's not what do I want to present on. It's not about me. The presentation is not really about the presenter. It's about the audience. So it's not what do I want to present on. It's what does the audience want or need to hear? What do they need to know? I may have spent three years studying the mating habits of feral cats, but if that's not useful to my audience, then I probably shouldn't present on it. I should do something that is useful to them. So I have to think of some questions about my audience. What is their background? Why are they there? What are they going to do with the, my information? How does their work connect to my work? What fields of study are they in? I need to think about these questions and analyze my audience so I can know either what they want or what they need, what they can use. So we've got the fifth thing. We've got to analyze the audience. So the first four are about the slides and the delivery of those slides. The fifth one is to know the audience. So before we can even start designing the slides, we've got to know the audience and analyze that audience. Know what they want and what they can use. We've also got to know their background, what knowledge they already have. 
A good professional presenter starts where his audience is. For example, if I'm talking on thermodynamics and I know the room is full of mechanical engineers, people who have degrees in that, then I'm not going to have to start with the basics of thermodynamics. But if I'm talking to a group of managers, venture capitalists, mechanical engineers, and some marketing people, then I'm going to have to start lower. So here's, here's my rule. Start at the bottom. Try to figure out where the middle ground is, then go lower, start at the bottom, and try to catch everyone up very quickly. The problem is that there's a gap in our knowledge. If our knowledge is here, we need to be challenged a little. We're going to learn the most right there. If it's way too high, we're not going to learn that much. If it's way too low, we're bored and we don't get much out of it. So we need to hit that gap. But the problem if we have multiple audiences, managers, marketers, engineers, then we have trouble hitting the gap because it's in different places. So what we do is try to catch these people up really quickly. These people are up here, they'll be bored. But we try to catch these people up really quickly and then we can hopefully hit that middle ground. Catch everyone up and then start. So start with that lowest common denominator and then build upon it and hopefully we can have everyone in the audience with us. So we've got to know what the audience wants, know what they can use, and then know what they already have. Know what knowledge they already have. You've got to analyze the audience.